Live, and it's time to focus on energy, and in particular, nuclear energy. I'm so happy to have with me Seth Gray, President and CEO of Lightbridge Corporation, and LTBR is the ticker symbol here at the New York Stock Exchange. We are going to need more and more and more energy. Nuclear used to be, a, I'm sorry, Seth, it used to be a little bit of a taboo word, yeah. and now, I mean, it could be really what we need for the future. Even today, we've been reporting on Spain and Portugal facing extreme outages when it comes to electricity and power. Um, good morning to you. And what do you anticipate going forward for demand? Well, good morning, Nicole. And we're actually on the NASDAQ. And, um, you know, everywhere I go in the world, they are projecting much greater electric power needs than they had just a couple of years ago because of data centers with AI, because of industries that are decarbonizing and they really don't know how they're going to get it. And most of it needs to be constant, reliable power. So not renewables, not something that goes on and off. Right. But for data centers, they want this constant power all the time. So nuclear is just perfect, and even more perfect if you want clean energy. So, you know, what we're seeing in Europe where they're facing blackouts today is, is grids having greater demands than uh, the current supply can, can reliably accommodate. We don't know yet if that's the reason for what happened today, but it's what we can look forward to if we don't start getting a lot more power on the electric grid. I didn't realize that renewables are just not 100 percent reliable. I mean, how is that? You know, Florida is called the Sunshine State. It's 20 percent less sunny than Phoenix, Arizona overall, because it rains, you know, every day during the summer and the sun goes in. And of course, everywhere that relies on solar has night and the wind doesn't blow a lot of the time. Um, I, I heard a kid kind of make a joke in Germany looking at these big wind uh, mills that weren't turning and say, well, why doesn't someone turn them on? And so batteries are also just extremely expensive to try to back them up. And all of that relies on critical minerals from China. So nuclear really checks all the boxes, including American energy independence and getting our allies off relying on fossil fuels from Russia. Yeah. Oh, I want to hear more about the huge amount of potential for nuclear. I mean, if you gave me the, you know, one, two, three of why this is the wave of the future and should be. Yeah. Well, number one, this has already been done in the United States, in Sweden. We've seen massive builds out of nuclear before. France, after Three Mile Island in 1979, built out the nuclear reactors that give it the greatest percentage of nuclear electricity in the world. Without that, Europe would not have gotten through the winters with the cut off of the Russian energy supplies. The French nuclear fleet kind of saved the West. Right. We can do this. We've done it before. We have 94 large reactors in the United States. We can build hundreds more. We don't have to rely on China for critical minerals, for solar, for wind, for batteries. And it turns out China made the wrong bet. What the right thing is, is the industries of the future, like data centers with AI, need constant massive power that those renewables can provide, but nuclear can. And so when you talk about um, what we have here in the States and American energy, independent energy, you talked about um, you have 94 units or whatever it is, um, and hundreds more could come. Hundreds more. I mean, that's more than double what you have now. I mean, triple thousands. I mean, what is the agenda? I mean, I mean, you have 94 well, yeah, today. Yeah. What's on the plan for the next year, so, two, you know, five? So, so, so two years ago at the COP meeting in Dubai, the big UN climate meeting, the United States joined many other countries in pledging to triple nuclear power globally by 2050. And then this past November in Baku, and I was at both of these meetings, this one in Azerbaijan, the United States pledged to triple nuclear power by 2050, which would be to add about 200 large reactors by 2050 in the U.S. 
as part of tripling in the world. And that's something that the Trump administration has kept up as an effort and is even stepping up support for nuclear, which has very bipartisan support in the Congress. Do you speak with the Trump administration and some of your fellow nuclear CEOs? Because, I mean, this is a group, of, I mean, it's like when we had COVID, all the pharma CEOs came in. When Trump administration came in, he wanted a lot of investment in tech. He brought in many tech um, CEOs. Are you finding that you have uh, conversations with the administration and or other CEOs in your business? Yeah, I was one of 10 CEOs of nuclear companies that met with President Trump in the White House during his first term. The administration mm. has been in touch with uh, people in the nuclear industry uh, since he started the new one, including the Secretary of Energy, Chris Wright, who, who's a big supporter of nuclear energy. And so, yes, there's, there's a lot of contact between the industry and the administration. So that's good. You find yes. that to be useful and helpful. Yeah, absolutely. It's helpful for the, in, for the administration to know the needs of industry. What projects are grabbing your attention right now that you're working on? Well, well the biggest thing we're doing at Lightbridge is we're testing this new fuel we invented that will increase the power output from the existing reactors as well as new ones while making them safer. So this is all about the added power the world needs. Get more power from the existing plants and improve the economic case for building new plants by getting so much more power out of each new unit using the Lightbridge fuel we're developing. What kind of piece of the pie will nuclear, what has nuclear been? You talked about how it saved, you know, France and saved the West at that time. How much of the energy actually comes from nuclear, I guess, now or recently? Right. And how much do you expect it will be of the pie going forward? So right now it's 19% of U.S. electricity supply, 1.9%, just about one-fifth. And, yeah, we have a mix with, with coal, with natural gas, with hydro, and, and with some renewables. Um, going forward, that percentage has to increase because the new industries going forward, like the data centers, are demanding clean, constant power. Nuclear has the greatest what's called energy density advantage, which is how much energy you produce for each unit of fuel, and its advantage is more than one million to one versus mm -hmm. anything else. Right. So if you're going to add a lot of power and you don't use nuclear, you're starting like at one one millionth of your potential. So uh, nuclear um, is something America can do without relying on foreign sources. It's something that we can do with our allies, and it's something that happens to power the industries that are showing the greatest growth for our economy. So we're at 19 percent. Uh, I mean, is it going to be upwards of 25 percent, 30 percent? Oh, I think we've got to get over 50 percent eventually. And that's uh, in what period of time to that 2050 date or? Yeah, I think we can by 2050. Okay, if we were to triple by 2050, right. we'd be over 50 percent. What is this uh, story about you and Oclo? Tell me a little bit about, and so we can have a better understanding yeah, of that Yeah, Oklo is a great company. It's listed here at the NYSC, and um, you know its chairman was Sam Altman, and uh, also on the board was Chris Wright, uh, who's oh, gone on to right. be the uh, Secretary of Energy. Two important people. Two important people who are not not on the board now, going off doing other things, but but really helped set that company in a great direction. And Lightbridge and Oklo are exploring two major things together. We are looking at co-locating the commercial plants to manufacture the nuclear fuels that we're designing. And this will hold down the capital costs and operating costs for both companies. And the other is that we're exploring sharing our technology for reprocessing and recycling so that we use the waste from reactors to make new energy and deal with the waste issue, and that's very exciting too. So we think we have a you know very promising future together with Oklo. That's, it's funny that you say that, because everybody always said, what do you do with all the electric vehicle batteries? Where are they all going? 
um, you know, I, I don't know. That's not your question. We, no, this it's is an, not even your business. No, it's but an what I'm saying is this recycling of yes. all this. You talk about recycling nuclear waste and working with a company like Oakwood to, to really figure this out. It's a very important question, Nicole. The batteries from the electric cars, the materials from the windmills, from the solar photovoltaics, these are very toxic materials and there isn't a good plan on what to do with them. Nuclear makes less than a soda can size of waste for providing all the energy you would use an entire lifetime in the United States if it all came from nuclear. And if you recycle the uranium out of it, then what's left to deal with is smaller than a pinball for powering your entire lifetime. And now there's nuclear technology that can even what's called transmute that down to less toxic material. So we can really handle this. It's more a policy issue than a technical issue. So those renewables, you would like people to take a second look, really, because in the big picture, I mean, we have to go, but they need, I mean, you're talking about all these different things, but then it, it causes other problems. I would like people to laugh at how terrible a decision China made at betting so much on producing wind, solar, and batteries, and how the United States is making the right choice now on looking at nuclear instead. We'll take it. That's a good way to end. Seth Gray, great Thank to you, see Nicole. you. Great President and CEO you. of LifeBridge Corporation. Thank you.